Here are the steps to get started with editing a video inside of Final Cut Pro that you're going to be sharing onto social media or the web somewhere. Now the first step is you have to get some information about where you're going to share this video to. So as an example, let's say we're going to share this video to Twitter. If we go into Twitter's website, they have a support page here, and it shows us what the limitations on video resolution and aspect ratio are. And these are very important because we need to know what the resolution and the frame rate are going to be for this video. So as we can see here, the maximum resolution is 1920 by 1200, which is not a standard video resolution, but we get the idea of what the resolution is there. And then the maximum frame rate is up to 40 frames per second. Again, that's also not a standard frame rate, but it's something that we can see here and, and understand. So how do th those numbers really impact you? Well, let's switch back to Final Cut Pro. To get started, what you need to do is create a new project. So we're just going to go up to the File menu, go down to New, and select Project. You can also use the shortcut here, Command-N, to create that new project. So now you're going to name your project. And I always recommend giving it a name. Don't leave it as untitled, otherwise you're going to get uh, confused later on when you have 10 different untitled projects. So let's just call this the beach day. You can choose what event you want this saved into. And then the important part here is what's under video. The format determines the size of this video. So in this case, it's set to 4K, but I'm going to change this and actually use a custom size here. And if you don't see all of these numbers, you might have it set here where it says automatic and you don't see any of those. Just click this use custom settings button and then you'll see all these uh, this information here. So for the format, you may select one of these built in or standard formats like a 1080p project and you can see the resolution changes. But if you're trying to share to Twitter, maybe you're trying to share a square or a vertical video, you're not going to have one of those formats right now built in. So just go down and choose custom. Now we can actually enter in a custom resolution. So for Twitter, many times I'll see that there's a square video being posted. So in that case, I'm going to use 1080 by 1080 as the resolution. And then the frame rate, you want to select a frame rate based on the video that you're going to use. If you remember on that support document, let me switch back over to that, we can see here that the maximum frame rate is 40 frames per second or 40 FPS. So in these videos that I've got here, I know that the frame rate is about 30 frames per second. So I'm going to go down and choose 30p. And that's it. Everything else can stay as is here. And I'll click OK to create that project. If you don't know what resolution or frame rate your videos were recorded at, you can click on the video clip. And then in the inspector on the right side, under the information inspector, we can see the frame size. Here this clip was 1920 by 1080 as the frame size. And the frame rate was 25p, or 25 frames per second. If I click on another clip here, you can see the same thing we have at the 1920 by 1080, but this one was a 29.97 frames per second. And if I go over to one of these first videos, these were shot in 4K, so they're 3840 by 12, uh, 2160, and also 30 frames per second. So in this, if you have mixed formats like I do here, just choose what you've been using the most and the most frequent, which for most social media right now that I'm seeing, at least in the US, is 1920 by 1080 and 30 frames per second. But again, you can go through and choose different options there and try that out. So that's great. We have the project created. And now all you need to do is start adding your clips. So I'm just going to click and drag to add a clip and drag it down onto the timeline. Let's add another one here. Now what you might notice is with these clips that we're adding, it puts in the full video to fit it, but we see there's black areas at the bottom and the top because it's shrinking it down to fill in this square resolution here. So if you don't want that, you can select all of your clips, go into the inspector, and under the video inspector here, if you scroll down to the bottom, there's a spatial conform section here that's set as type to fit. And what that means is it's going to fit the entire video into that frame. So you can actually change this uh, spatial conform from fit to fill. And now you'll notice it fills the video in 
and gets rid of those black bars at the top and the bottom. And if you selected all of your clips in the timeline, it'll adjust all of those at the same time. So that's how you can fill in the video there. And that's great for most clips. I'm just gonna add the rest of the, the clips that I have here down onto the timeline. And notice here, all of these are not uh, filling, so I'm gonna select those. I'll just repeat the same steps, going up to the video inspector, scroll down to spatial conform, and change that from fit to fill. And in some of these videos, that works out pretty well. But if we look at uh, like this video here, it's not really uh, spaced correctly. Like if, our, if we're trying to focus here on the milkshake, that's a little bit cut off. So if that's the case, again, use the inspector, go down to the transform options, and you can use this to reposition the video. You can either change it from top to bottom or use the X uh, coordinate to change from left to right to re-center or adjust where that video is placed. If you don't like using the inspector and using these controls, you can also use the transform tool, which is this one at the lower left corner of the viewer. And with that enabled, you can now drag the video around and reposition it. You can even use the corners to zoom in, zoom out, if you wanna go in closer on a video clip there. Uh, one little tip about doing that, top right, change your percent. Set for me, 92, if I go down to 50%, makes it a little bit easier to see this box and to move around and reposition what I'm trying to see in that screen there. And then the last tip for this video, as you're making these adjustments, especially if you're zooming in closer, know that you are going to make the video a little bit blurrier because you're going in closer. So if you shot the video like I did with this clip at 4K, that gives us more pixels so we can zoom in closer and we won't see the video become as blurry as we zoom into it. So the higher resolution you can shoot out, the better quality your video is gonna come out as. And that's how you can get started inside of Final Cut Pro with a project that is now sized correctly for the social media platform you might go to share to later on. You can now just edit your video as you normally would and put in your transitions, your titles, everything else to it. And then when you're ready to share, it's sized correctly for the social media platform that you're going to share to. If you got any other questions, don't hesitate. Put them in the comments below, or you can send an email to finalcutprohelp at me.com.